I think I'm recording. So in the first of hopefully many, many lessons from the x 281 IAs this semester, I'm going to be talking about GitLine and the iStream extraction operator and why it is sometimes problematic to use these two together. All right, so problematic example in some CPP file, we've got an input.txt file, we have an iStream trying to read in the data from this txt file, get it into two strings. The first string we're trying to read in with the iStream extraction operator and the second string we'll use getLine for. Doesn't seem like there's anything too sketchy in this code. If we print out str1, we probably expect that first line would be in there and then str2 we would expect for second line to be in there. But of course, this is a problematic example. So when we print str1, we see first line, but when we print str2, we don't see anything. And I'm sure some of you will be asking, but why? And that is the reason for this slide deck. First things first though, a helpful way to think about iStreams. We see the text file like this, normal file. We've got words, maybe numbers, just characters. There's some new lines, there's some tabs, there's formatting. But we can think of an iStream as viewing this really as just one long sequence of characters. And everything in the stream is a character, even a new line, even a tab. And really thinking of it as one long string like this um, can be helpful for understanding why we went wrong in that previous example. I want to be clear though that this is not how iStreams are actually implemented. This is just a helpful way to think about them. That was a slow animation, but the bottom line is iStreams are just handles on streams of characters. We ask the stream to get some data and it removes that data from the stream and returns it to us. Pretty easy things, you probably already know this from 280. Here is how the iStream operator works. And of course, you're probably already gonna know this, but knowing these exact steps is very important. First things first, it skips the initial white space. Then it tries to grab something resembling the type that you gave it off of the stream, and it stops when it sees more white space. And that's extremely important, that the trailing white space is still in the stream. And white space includes our friend the new line, spaces, tabs, and carriage returns. So a quick example of this, if we have a string, we have our same input.txt, and we have, Whoa. sorry about that, my roommate just came in, but we have this string, we have an iStream on our input.txt, we try to read it in. Here's what the objects look like before the operator, um, the extraction operator call. And of course, again, I have to disclaim this is not how iStreams are actually implemented, but it's helpful to think about them like this. So, before the call, after the call. Great, we grabbed the word just like we said. What we did is we skipped the initial white space, we grabbed everything resembling a string, and we stopped at the trailing white space. And it's important to note, again, like we said, that trailing white space was left on the stream. And that's usually fine because the first step of the iStream um, operator, whoops, is to skip initial white space. So if we use this and we use it again, we'll leave the last white space on the stream and we'll skip it when we try to grab the next thing. So it's not a problem. However, if I can get to the next slide, this is how GitLine works. It gets all text from the provided stream until it hits a new line. And that is everything up to, um, that said everything up to, but not including the new line is put into the string that you pass to it. But the new line itself is not, um, the new line is discarded and it isn't on the stream, but it also isn't in the string that you just passed to it. So we just throw away the new line and whatever was after the new line is now the first character in the stream. And that's pretty easy. That's what everybody would expect from this function. So same function, um, we're using get line instead of the extraction operator this time. So this is pretty easy. We would expect to get the first line, so up to and not including this new line character. And that's exactly what happens. The stream now has apple bottom jeans and that new line character removed, but our string variable has apple bottom jeans in it. Seems pretty easy. So why doesn't our example work? Well, if we revisit that problematic example, we can see, um, well, first got the input.txt, um, should have named it something else because I have two input.txts in these examples. But we've got, same exact code as before. I've color coded these and I've provided some, some of that same memory mapping um, 
diagrams, I guess, just to help visualize it. All right, so before line three, we haven't read anything in yet. We've just declared our variables. We've linked our iStream to the text file. Everything looks great. This is what the iStream object is seeing. Again, not actual implementation. Okay, then we read in str1. We're gonna skip the initial white space, grab everything resembling a string, and we're gonna leave the trailing white space in the stream. So that is why this new line is still in the stream. But this is what we expected. We got first line. However, when we use get line here, what get line does, if you remember, is it grabs all the characters up to, but not including, the new line character. And the new line character is the first character on the stream. So after line four, string two is still empty. The only thing we've done is removed that new line from the stream. So that is why when we print out string one, we get first line, and we print out string two, we get nothing. All that get line call did was remove this new line character from the stream. So, solutions to this problem. They're pretty easy to come up with, and I'm sure if you've been following along, you can come up with some of these on your own. Really, just knowing what these functions do is often enough to convince you that you won't make this mistake in the future. So, what we could have done in our previous example, we could have used the extraction operator for both reads. That would have skipped that new line because we skipped initial white space and it would have grabbed um, second line. We could have used get line for both reads because the get line would have removed the new line character at the end of the first read um, so that the second read wouldn't grab it and not get anything. We could call get line, um, so how we called get line the first time in that example, we know that it just grabbed and threw away the new line. We could just call it again to get the second one. Um, and this is pretty ugly and I wouldn't recommend it, but it would still work. Or we could do some other fancy things like calling in standard white space or or using iStream ignore, but I think we should just stick to these first two to be honest. And my personal suggestion, because I'm the one who wrote these slides, is that you should use the iStream extraction operator everywhere that you want to keep the data, and then use getLine only when you have intention to throwing away the data. And in x 281 we should use, in my opinion, getLine only when you want to grab a comment and throw it away. Um, and then use the extraction operator for everything else. And this is because I think operator, the extraction operator is a cleaner, more modern way of doing things. It has the same interface for reading in all kinds of types, and you can even overload it to work for your custom types. So, in summary, using get line and the extraction operator in tandem can be tricky, and it's important to understand that the behavior in that first example is actually the intended correct behavior, and that it's gonna be consistent, it's gonna happen every time. It's just usually not the behavior we want. So to get that behavior we want, there are plenty of different solutions. I would just recommend trying to avoid using these two operations in tandem and really only using get line when you need it. Um, and if you know what these functions do, if you go back and review these slides, it's pretty easy to avoid making this mistake. All right, and that's all I've got. There are some bonus slides at the end of the video here. I'm just gonna speed through them, not read anything. You can screenshot and take a look at these later if you want. The slides are also gonna be in this Piazza post. Okay, yeah, thanks for watching.